you're still watching ways now um uh, hold yourself responsible for a higher standard than anybody expects of you never excuse yourself um um this is a quote by um henry ward beecher throughout the world there is a set of standards that have been established that companies organizations and industries have all agreed to hold up these standards have been established by mutual arrangement between these organizations as part of their participation in the ISO, that's the International Organization of Force Standardization. It was these kinds of standards that helped drive the Industrial Revolution, and today it drives the advancement of all technologies from automotive to telecommunications. Now, World Standards Day celebrate the work of these men and women and the contributions their work makes to the world at large. So, I think um, I have many perfectionists on this set uh, today, I was just going to say. <laughs> does it have anything to do with... It's just setting a standard, you know. For me, I think... I think this is really lacking in, in a lot of organizations, in a lot of um, establishments, right, where these are standards that you're supposed to adhere to mm -hmm. and you see a lot of us falling short of it. Mm -hmm. Why is it so difficult for us to maintain, I mean, especially ex that standard of quality or excellence, mm -hmm. you know, in what we, whatever it is that we're doing? Why? I also look at it from the aspect of quality control. Mm -hmm. Basically, mm -hmm. we have the SON in Nigeria. What are their duties? What are they supposed to do? We have a lot of mediocre uh, fake products out there currently and you know the manufacturers of these products we do not know where they are so i'm even from. taking it from the so personal so, angle you okay see. so when you say like hold yourself accountable hold yourself yes. accountable you know okay i'm even saying that where you hold yourself accountable mm -hmm. nobody's watching so exactly. you are the one i mean like do you need to be supervised for you to to, to create I, a standard I think it also comes from responsibility mm. if you are responsible and you feel accountable to whatever duty that has been given to you mm. you would want to do your best and also put in the extra work to ensure that, that you, you hit that standard of what is expected of you, yeah. basically. Well, um, Isi, while I agree with you, um, mm. people would not hold themselves accountable to what they don't know. Absolutely. A lot of people are just very ignorant and um, probably do not even take the time to find out what is the right thing to do. And then you see, it's only for some people, it's only when they have the opportunity to leave their comfort zone, maybe go to town or even mm -hmm. leave the shores of their country to another country that they actually know what it means to have order, mm -hmm. to follow a queue, you standards. know, things like that, standards. Yes, absolutely. So I, I think it's also part of the, the responsibility mm -hmm. of whatever authorities are available in any given it, yeah. place to actually put in that structure, put it in because mm. most times people will not know what to do and they do not know that there are consequences. Yeah, and let me confirm. They're not held. Do you as a customer experience, else. you know, um, uh, what's it called, expert. expert? And this is, I think, will be one of the strongest, you know, um, forte for you mm. as a, as a person to ensure that a certain standard, you know, is is put in place across all um, sectors of your organization, yeah. you know. So wh what are you going to say about that? Standards is a it's, a, it's a difficult thing in this part of the world. So, I mean, things like ISO are fairly, fairly standard these days in the area of technology, digital. Most banks um, will be ISO, certi ISO certified. So many organizations will be ISO certified, particularly if you're playing financial services. So on that side, it's pretty standardized. But if you come down to, I like where Noma was coming from in her perspective. Um, I keep saying you can't pull out of an empty cup. You can't give what you don't have. And a lot of people, like you said, people, there are people who think in Nigeria that traffic lights are a suggestion. You know, the average Okada guy just thinks this thing is not here for me. It's here for everybody else. He's just whizzing by, you know. And if you've grown up in that kind of environment and nobody has said to you that, look, this thing is wrong or nobody has taught you what it's supposed to be. And given the state of our education sector in this country, some people just don't know what good law and order should be. I mean, I know that I've said it many times on the show that people 
you know, children instinctively know right from wrong. But mm -hmm. when you start to want to go from basic right and wrong all the way down to excellence, it's a very far, far, far mm -hmm. space in between, um, which is why we sort of major in mediocrity in this country, because there are so many factors against people getting to the point of excellence. But that being said, it's only an excuse for so long. As individuals, as we develop, as we mature, it's up to you to decide what kind of life you want to live. And, you know, even if you've seen it done in this way everywhere, there's enough information out there now that data is cheap. You know, we find all the bad things on the Internet so you can find the good things, too. Um, so people okay. can decide for themselves. I had some conversations with some young people mm -hmm. last week and I was asking about, you know, what do you stand for? What do you want to be known for? What are your personal ethics? What are your beliefs? And some 20 year olds looking at me with blank stare on their face, never had thought, thought about this and like, oh, this conversation is like an eye opener because now I got to go and go away and think about these things. So that just validates for me the point that, you know, young people these days, children are not being raised in the way that they would be able to aspire to excellence unless they were the kind of individual who, as they matured, as I said, started to think and really question the things around them and wanted to be better. Absolutely. So quickly on that note, Uti, mm -hmm. let's hear a story. We have like three minutes. Or My story is a very short one. I was looking for something light. Um, <laughs> and this for me is a huge congratulations to Basket Mouth, the comedian, who has now signed a deal with um, Empire Music. So he posted, I think, on Instagram um, yesterday, I believe it was, um, that he signed with Empire. And this is, of course, Empire is an independent rec record label in the States. Um, and, of course, they've been acquiring a steady lineup of Nigerian artists. So he's in good company with Alamide and Fireboy. Um, and this comes off the back of his 2020 album, Yabasi. So congratulations to Basket Mouth. I always love to see when Nigeria is exporting more than bad news. So awesome, awesome work. Congratulations to him. Congratulations, Basket Mouth. All right, so easy, quickly. Okay, quick, the quick one is, uh, I, what the story that caught my attention is school dropouts in Kankara, um, local government of uh, Kastina State, hit 75%. Now this is this calls to mind the fact that what is the what's the future of the children in the, in the north? Mm -hmm. Actually, we um, this was uh, conducted by um, UNICEF in conjunction with um, FCDO, um, a Commonwealth um, su subsidiary. Mm -hmm. um, so currently, and we also have the other concept of having about 13.5 million children out of school in Nigeria currently. Mm -hmm. And this was also as a result of insecurity. What is happening currently in Kastina State is as a result of insecurity. Yeah. And it, you know, it calls to mind a lot, mm -hmm. basically, what is the future of the children in the North? That is what just struck me. In that's a huge Seventy-five mm. percent, actually. Wow. That's a scary. We need number. to make a it a scary topic one. So, what is what kind of what, leaders what are we churning out? What are the implications of of it in the future? It's not even today. It's going to cause a ripple effect. In fact, it will start from now. No more quickly. Mm. Your yes, story. Please. Well, very quickly, my story is about the the police department in Nigeria. They yeah. say model police stations with architectural designs to replace outdated ones. And this was spoken by the IGP, um, Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba. And he said that the police stations across the country will be upgraded and modernized, both in terms of architectural design, furnishing and operational controls. What caught my attention is where he said that they would strive to build on these achievements, initiating certain actions that are directed at addressing specific issues that impact their professional output. So basically, it's an overhaul. They're looking at doing a total overhaul of the police system here, mm -hmm. both in terms of their upkeep, in terms of structure, in terms of accommodation everything to make it more more um what's the word more interesting more um attractive basically so let's see i'm i'm really curious how this is going to come out if they really take it to the end then it will be a huge kudos to the inspector general and his team 
to be able to realize this because we all know the deplorable state. I mean, the police barracks, mm -hmm. you don't even want to go there. So much is going on and breeding all kinds of humans, right? Well, let's, so let's, let's, let's see. Let's we'll continue to follow the, that, yeah. the story. All right. right, so mine is quickly. Uh, human rights lawyer Femi Falana has called on the president, Major General Buhari, uh, retired, to abide by his oath of office, calling mm -hmm. on the police not to disrupt the upcoming NSAS protest. Fela, uh, Falana, who is the interim chairman, Alliance on Surviving COVID-19 and Beyond, said that this is a in, uh, said this rather in a statement today that the Nigerian police force lacks the power to ban protests in Nigeria. Um, so, because you know, remember, if you remember, the Commissioner of Police in Lagos, Hakim Odumosu, had said that they would not allow any one to stage another NSAS protest mm -hmm. ahead of the one year anniversary of the protest. So, this, I mean, I'm happy that Femi Falan is coming to talk. People are being clamoring for, you know, because, you know, in one way, this is also freedom of expression. So Absolutely. you are not allowed to express your, you know, your, your pain. You know, okay, people are feeling pain. People are feeling, you know, They're disgruntled. hurt, yes. disgruntled and all of that. You're not allowing them. You're trying to gag them. So, I mean, we're talking freedom today. So I just thought to mention this. Um, so we'll go on a break now. When we return from the break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.